Welcome to Test Rack Podcast, where we unlock your power to innovate. Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm going to be your host today. Test Rack's mission is to empower airmen, connect them to resources, and accelerate change across the Air Force logistics enterprise. Specifically, our team works as an innovation accelerator assigned to the Air Staff Logistics Directorate, where we partner with airmen to operationalize the new sustainment strategy. In this episode, we interviewed the Combat Ready Airmen Program, or CRA for short. CRA is responsible for all equipment for airmen that aren't pilots or special operators. So that accounts for 91% of airmen. All right, here we go. Wonderful. Uh, no, you're, you're doing uh, great. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, so what does CRA do, the Combat Ready Airmen Office? So Combat Ready Airmen is uh, intended to serve the 91% of the Air Force that is not air crew or special ops. So all of those air, those AFSCs that are not um, within those 9%, so maintenance, um, logistics, security forces, medical, all of those folks that don't have um, standardized gear, that's where we come in. And so we are going to be the oversight to make sure that there's um, standardization and making sure that there's safety requirements on all of the gear to make sure our airmen are properly equipped and um, able to perform their jobs to the best of their ability and um, safely. Um, now, you have a dynamic mission. Like, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you work you know, not just with the Air Force and, and not really just with the DAF, like with, with uh, Space Force, but from a joint perspective as well. Do you want to dig into that, the dynamic mission set that CRA does have? Absolutely. So obviously when you're taking on 91% of the Air Force, um, you got to work quick, right? You've got to work smart. You've got to work fast. And so we can't always be the ones developing everything. And the reality is we have a lot of our sister services out there doing that work right now that we can leverage and we should be leveraging. So one of the big uh, missions that we have here is um, working with the Army, the Marines, the Navy, on what are they doing for their soldiers, for their infantry that we can leverage for our security forces or for our mobility bags. And so we actually have a team of uh, embeds over at Fort Belvoir, which is where PEO soldier is. So that's kind of the equivalent uh, to CRA for the Army. And so we have them embedded in there being our eyes and ears, and they put us in contact with the right people when we have requirements that we think are pretty closely aligned, or maybe they have something that we heard from our embed team about, and we're like, wow, maybe the Air Force should look into that. So they are this huge link for us um, to make sure our airmen are not only getting what the Air Force technical experts think, but also the DOD experts. So we rely heavily on them to leverage uh, solutions that they've already created. And it cuts down our time for getting that to the airmen as well. So right now, your, I mean, your strongest relationship sounds like it's with the Army? Yes, absolutely. So we've worked very closely with the Army on how to set this infrastructure up because they already had it. Um, and we also have a lot of common uh, requirements. Um, when you look at them, there might be a few little KPP differences here, here and there, but the reality is, most of our requirements are, are pretty similar. So we work very closely with them, but we also work closely with the Navy. Um, we work closely with the Marines. So um, last year we were looking at some body armor. Um, and first thing we said was we were going to look at what do our sister services have? And we knew that the Marines were working on something and we knew the Army was working on something. And so instantly we looked at both of them. We were meeting with both of their acquisition teams, the technical experts were having dialogue between the, the different offices, and we realized very quickly that we could cut this time down drastically as well as save money not only on testing, but when you're talking about fielding a common solution, uh, there's economy of scale there that we can leverage, and, and everybody in the DOD wins when that happens. So um, we looked at both of their solutions, and um, unfortunately, the Marines didn't meet uh, everything we needed, but we were able to look at the Army one. And again, we were able to leverage all of their ballistic tests, their field tests, their um, operational tests, and it helped us cut that test time down drastically. So from the time we got the requirement to the time we made the final decision on the solution was, I think, like nine months. 
And now it's just working with the Army and DLA to get that contract set up. And we should be receiving those uh, those body armor uh, within the next year. And so that is a huge win for all of the mobility bags, but also for our security forces folks who are working with that body armor right now. So we work very closely with the Army on that, and we are so appreciative for all of their help because it saved us money and saved us time and really delivered that solution quickly to our airmen. That's one specific product. Yep. Like, and okay. how do you go about finding Deep and equipment. identifying other pieces of equipment? I mean, because 91% of the Air Force yep. has busy. to have a pretty diverse spectrum of, of needs and, you know, and digging into, you know, we'll talk about requirements here in a little bit, but like, how do you go about identifying that equipment? Within the Air Force, you mean? Anywhere. So, um, well, one, there's a lot of joint working groups that, that we have with, with our sister services. So that's one way that we kind of keep an eye on. But um, as we're looking within the Air Force, we really rely on that user community, right? Um, we are not experts within that field, but they are, and we will trust them. Um, we may help them because we have the knowledge base within the industry. So maybe we know uh, there's a better technology out there, or maybe we should refine something that they you know have in their requirement but ultimately they're using it and they're the ones that need to to identify what it is that they want and we can just help tweak mm -hmm. and you all are the experts in, in product development too right and it's like how do you go about like testing that equipment like I, hopefully no one's out there like when we talk about testing body armor that gives me a little bit of anxiety <laughs> <laughs> well so um, it, it varies for each program, right? Um, we look at the individual needs of the program. Um, if you're talking, let's say handcuffs, that, that might not need uh, a, lot of, a lot of testing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're talking body armor, obviously that's going to be very different. So we will look um, not only for different technical um, testing. So if you're talking something that's got fabric, we're going to look at different standards that uh, the DOD has or the Air Force has, and we're going to make sure that all that fabric meets that. And we're going to do very technical tests. Maybe that's a burn test. Maybe that's um, different shade testing. It, it, could, it could vary. Um, but when you're talking um, about any program, when, we're, when you're talking about airmen, we want to ultimately make sure that whatever we're giving the airmen is something that the user wants. So user feedback is so important for us. User user um, evals and operational and field testing is critical for us. So maybe it's us buying a couple samples and we're going to send it to unit, you know, unit alpha over here and we're going to tell them wear this for X amount of days or weeks or months and then give it back to us and tell us what you think. So that's one of the baselines that we incorporate here is making sure that whoever the user is, is going to be involved in the, in the testing of it. That's something that you know, Tesseract is passionate about as well. Uh, airman approved innovation. Absolutely. Um, and, and focusing on, all right, like hey, some scientist, some, some engineer can make a product and it can very well work. Um, but does it meet that end users, um, like truly their need? Do they want it? And that lowers the barrier to entry um, for, you know, it, and that acceptance for that airman to take it and to run with it and to actually get use out of it, right? Um, you know, those are things that we think about, you know, at, at Tesseract. I know at, at Kessel Run, they have the same the mm -hmm. same mindset with software, like end users first. Um, if the user doesn't want it, uh, if it doesn't work for that end user, then then why are we like trying to develop this product? Why are we trying to code this software? Uh, why are we trying to get this? body armor if it if it doesn't work or if it doesn't meet the the right requirements um so i think that's uh that's awesome that we that we have that that mutual like you know feeling towards like um airmen first right which yes. is i mean that, that's what every you know leader should think right like hey you know, like they're people first airmen first but um i can go on and on about that i'll get i'll get off my <laughs> soapbox here um what functional communities have you seen the most traction with so far so right now, um, Combat Ready Airmen is still standing up. So that means um, we're still gaining resources. And when you're talking about taking on 91% of the Air Force, that's hundreds of AFSC. So we got to start somewhere. So right now, um, our, our pilot community, if you will, is security forces. So for the last two years or so, we've been really working with them. Um, and the first big thing that we tackled was female body armor. Um, and we worked with them from 
the time that they were talking about the requirement, refining the requirement, and then all the way through the acquisition uh, process to fielding. And so now that's completely fielded both on active duty uh, reserves and guard. And we still work with them on that user feedback, right? So we still have a survey out there that we're still collecting feedback that comes to the program office. But we have such a close uh, relationship with the Security Forces Center and with our A4 uh, counterparts that it's all just kind of one big team. Mm -hmm. Um, So right now, the biggest community is Security Forces. um, And as our resources grow, we plan to to rapidly expand to as many AFSCs as we can take on. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking a little bit before uh, we started recording uh, about specifically security forces and bringing an airman on board. You know, not not a security forces colonel, not a GS civilian. You're bringing on a senior airman onto Mm -hmm. your staff to speak to those requirements, right? You know, yes. And like, and tell us a little bit about that. We think that's fascinating. So the intent is um, within, um, so I work in the human systems division within um, Agile Combat Support uh, in L- LCMC. And so obviously human systems is focused on our human side. That's our airmen, right? So we have um, all different uh, SMEs within the division that are typically um, aircrew flight equipment SMEs because we do a lot of pilot stuff. But when we're talking combat ready airmen and we're talking that we have a security forces focus right now, who do we need? I need a senior airman. I need somebody who's been wearing the body armor, who's been using the handcuffs, who's been, you know, wearing um, the flashlight and knows that the battery, you know, lags. I need somebody that's got that experience and it's fresh in their minds. Because as you go up in rank, you're more likely to be in the office, right? And that's wonderful because now you're looking from a strategic uh, point of view. However, you're forgetting about those cold days that you were sitting out checking IDs in Ohio Mm -hmm. and it stunk, right? And so now we've got her coming in and she's going to be here advocating for her community. So um, it's a huge responsibility and it's amazing for her and for the community as a whole because they're not asking a chief to come in. They're not asking a senior math sergeant. We're asking a senior airman. Um, And she is going to be a huge resource for us in the uh, program office and the material side to figure out what we don't know, right? When we're developing those tests, what equipment do we need to know fits on your your vest? What's your day-to-day life? How how are you going to use that that flashlight? What's some of the gripes you have about getting in, out, getting in and out of your vehicle when you're wearing all this? Or how can we make things compact? Um, and so that's a big, a big resource for us to gain. Um, and although we've got this great relationship with Security Forces Center, um, she will be in-house. So to be able to ask her a quick question will be um, a huge value for us. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Uh, whether it's senior airmen, staff, tech, um, you name it, uh, we're all brought on specifically for that. So it's really cool uh, and inspiring to see other offices take the same perspective mm-hmm. and uh, to value uh, and to, to really just put their money where their mouth is, where it says, hey, we are interested in airman innovation. We're interested in airman approved products and we want to develop those products. Um, let's put our money where, where our mouth is and, and bring airmen on board uh, to tell them, you know, what, um, you know, what their problems are. Um, and speaking of security forces, uh, we also have uh, some common ground with the liquid cooled uh, plate carrier project uh, mm-hmm. with Lieutenant O'Brien, you know, here at, at Wright Pat. Uh, interested to hear um, the uh, CRA's perspective of like how, how all that happened. Yeah, uh, so we were actually brought into it fr- through half. Um, And this was right after the whole Spark Tank um, winning happened. And they were like, hey, this seems right up your alley. Um, So we started working with him. But we found out that um, the research lab, AFRL, had already been kind of in discussion with him. So we have linked into that whole cycle um, and that whole circle of um, developers. And right now, it's still really early on in in the technology phase. So... We are just kind of monitoring and making sure um, that it continues to progress. And once it gets a little bit farther along and, you know, it's a little bit more um, manufacturable and higher in its uh, TRL, 
we will jump in and make sure that um, our user communities are aware of it and see where we can actually um, put it out into an operational environment because ultimately this has a lot of applicability because, I mean, the idea of it being a, a water-based cooling plate that you wear, I mean, EOD would love this. Um, if you're wearing chem, that would be huge. Um, security forces and hot environments, putting that under, I mean, that's a big deal to take care of our airmen and make sure that when we're putting them in these different uh, OCIE uh, in items that they're not getting overheated. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big deal. I hate being hot. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in an EOD suit and be like, no pressure. I don't want it to blow up on me, but I'm also <laughs> dying and there's a sweat bead coming down my head and I can't even get it. So like to be able to have a cooling system underneath that would make a difference. And I don't need to get in an EOD suit and ever do that to understand <laughs> that that's just a good idea. <laughs> so, so we're really, um, uh, monitoring that closely, but the fact that he had uh, such a good idea, um, we are thrilled with. Mm -hmm. That was just fascinating to see mm -hmm. that go through the pipeline. Um, watching uh, Lieutenant O'Brien work with, you know, with you guys, you know, work with AFRL, mm -hmm. work with Tesseract, and then ultimately, you know, make its way down to the Dragon Layers uh, competition and win. I mean, that's. <laughs> Speaking of the army again, right? <laughs> um, so cool uh, to see the 18th Airborne Corps uh, put that on. Just a little shout out to them. Um, just awesome. Uh, so we talked a lot about security forces. Um, mm -hmm. How can other functional communities like get involved? How can they you know, knock on CRA's door? Uh, and Well, not literally. This was a hard <laughs> building to find, by the way. Um, how can they... Um, go to CRA and say, hey, look, um, we need your help? Or um, how can you continue to grow those relationships with other uh, functional communities? That is a great question. So um, I mentioned before filming, we've got a lot of passion on our team. This is a big deal. I mean, you're talking about 91% of the Air Force. So we are very passionate and we want to get to as many people as we can. Uh, but I also mentioned that we're still standing up. So we do have limited resources right now. And so we want to know where everyone's needs are, um, but understand with limited resources comes a little bit of a time delay. So we are focusing on security forces right now, but as our resources grow in the next several years, we plan on bringing on uh, different uh, AFSCs. Um, and we would love to know if there are people that would like uh, CRA. I mean, it always helps us to grow our resources if there's a demand out there, right? So they can always reach out to AFMC A4 and let them know that there's there's different function functional communities that are in need and they're interested. Um, but understand again, our resources are limited right now, and we're we're just pushing so hard to make everybody's you know user community have a home because they mm -hmm. should. That's our job. Um, but it is it is still standing up right now. Um, so to make your life easier, um, to talk about like specifically about requirements, mm -hmm. um, you know, w when we're talking about products that need to be developed and we're talking about like airman approved innovation, how can these functional communities, these airmen, um, articulate the requirements uh, necessary to make it easier on CRA to, to fulfill that requirement, to, to develop that product. And then, um, and then hopefully at some point, you know, like sustain that. Another great question. So our AFMCA4 counterparts are, are, are they are technically the uh, requirements integrator for CRA. So they have um, templates already that if a user community is interested um, and we've brought them on board, um, we will provide them and we will help them work through the different documents we have different templates for different needs um, but really it starts with them letting us know like hey we need x y and z and then we can coordinate with them and during that process um, we have drafted versions and we also bring in the program office side of the house so my team with the engineering and the technical expertise and we kind of review it and make sure that there's no gaps there's no holes that we're getting you guys the best thing out there and then we make sure that that's a final doc and then they finally send it over to us and then that's when we go out and execute to fulfill that requirement 
Awesome. Yeah, I think it's uh, um, also it's one of those things where end users think like equipment just falls out of the sky and like it's it's supposed to be <laughs> you know already you know perfectly crafted and mm -hmm. uh, but it, it takes you know someone's voice and and we're looking for theirs right and um, uh, so so it's it's great to see that um, we are hyper focused on on making sure that their their voice is heard via not just social media or anything like that but official requirements uh, to build products that 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 they need you know and that they want um do you have anything else that you want to say about cra that that we missed i don't think so i think we've um covered the gamut and i'm I'm so thankful for this uh podcast because as we stand up it's really nice to have people understand what our role is and uh hopefully they find value in it and continue to want us to to be around to help them out awesome very cool awesome so thank you very much. I really appreciate your time today. No thank problem. You so thank you for having me. Thank you again for listening to Tesseract Podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Any references to trademarked, copyrighted, or protected products or services such as books, movies, or businesses are used here for the limited purpose of education and professional development of Air Force Airmen. If you have any questions, please contact us at www.tesseract.af.mil.